Hi, I'm Pete, and welcome to Just a Few Acres Farm. In this episode, I think it's episode 15 already, of the Super C Restoration, we're going to concentrate on two things, two very important things. The fuel system, the carburetor, the intake manifold, the air cleaner, and then the ignition system on the other side, the distributor. Getting them all torn apart, cleaned up, rebuilt, ready for another 70 years of service. And to get started with all this work, of course, carburetor. I already got the pieces all cleaned up for this carburetor. I have a rebuild kit here. This is a Zenith carburetor, very common carburetor. In fact, I rebuilt one start to finish for the 504, my Farmall 504. I'll put a link to it in the video description in case you want to see a blow-by-blow -blow disassembly and rebuilding a carburetor. I'm not going to show all that here for the interest of brevity. I start with these little teeny orifices. Get them in. This here that I'm putting in is the final filter screen. It goes in here and the fuel line comes down the carburetor this way. If you ever have problems with your tractor starving for fuel and you just can't figure it out, well take this little bugger off because the screen might be clogged up. I got stranded in the field one time with this tractor because the screen was clogged up. So there you go. Here we have the choke with packing. And then we have the fun job of putting the choke plate in right here. Choke is choking. And here's the throttle shaft. You gotta make sure you seal these good, put new seals in them so air doesn't creep in there. We can set the throttle butterfly in here. This little plate here that swings is really what tells the engine or the and the carburetor together to give it more gas. The wider it opens, the more gas and air mixture is going to pour into the engine or get sucked into the engine and the more power you're going to have, the faster it's going to turn. Right and tight. Here's a needle and seat that regulates fuel flow into the carburetor. Very important little fitting here. I only got this giant screwdriver to tighten it down. This is called the needle and seat because here's the needle valve. This happens to be a rubber, plastic, whatever it is, tipped one. I usually run these carburetors dry when I shut the tractors down, so I'm not as concerned about deterioration of those kinds of things, and it is what it is. Now comes the gasket and the Venturi, which is that magical device which creates good fuel mixing and a little bit more vacuum. And you gotta put all this on before you put the float on because the float is bigger than the gasket here, so don't tell me how I learned that, but I've had a few of these part. I got a new float pin here that came with the kit and slide that in. And so when the float goes up and down it opens and closes the needle valve that's underneath it here and lets fuel in or stops fuel depending on the level of the fuel that's in the bowl under here. It keeps proper fuel level in the bowl. Now we can check the float height. Very important and the float height is measured from the face of this upper so it's the face here to the bottom of the float. Remember, this is the bottom of the float down here. And for this carburetor, it's supposed to be 1 and 5 30 seconds. And indeed, that's what we have, 1 and 5 30 seconds. And here's the mating half. Of course, no gasket sealer on these gaskets. They do just fine without any sealer. And you might have to take it apart later on to adjust it, so you never put sealer on them. You put set that all in together. Then you got four screws going here. And that's it for the carburetor. These guys are really simply make sure everything works. You know, with the choke and the throttle plates working the way they should. Give it a little shake. You can hear the floats going up and down so you know you don't have a float stuck against the side of the bowl that it's centered. So, we're all set there. Next I'm going to rebuild the distributor and just like the carburetor I have detailed rebuild videos of these in the channel. I'll put a link to one of them down below in the video description and we'll get this all cleaned up and rebuild it. Good as new. First we'll take the coil off the top here and this is an original IH coil. Always worked great. No need to replace that as long as it's working. These old ones seem to last forever.
Then this plate comes off here to expose the spark advance mechanism. Get out of there. Oh, it's oily in there. We don't like that. There we go. This is the advanced mechanism itself, so the faster the engine turns, the more these weights fly out. And actually, they'll fly all the way to the end of their travel at a pretty low RPM, so the engine's fully advanced. It changes the relationship of these cam uh, lobes to the points so that you're firing a little bit before top dead center the faster the engine is rotating. These look really good. But it all needs to be disassembled and cleaned up get all this gunk out of here. Here's the advanced mechanism. Cam. We want to check for wiggle on the shaft here and this one's actually one of the tightest ones I've seen for a distributor this old. That is very good. No wobble on that. Advanced weight. Advanced weight. There's a bushing down in here but it feels good and tight so I don't think I need to worry about replacing that bushing. There's also a seal down in here, but I'm not that worried about it. Well, wait a second here. Nah, eh, we're gonna take it apart. We got some play in there. I don't like that. Well, anyway, here's all the pieces. I'm gonna clean them up, and then I'll be back with you. Okay, I got the distributor parts all cleaned up here. Everything's ready to go and put back together. First thing to do here is put a new O-ring in on the bottom here which keeps oil and grease from down below from traveling up and getting in the distributor you don't want a lot of oil in your distributor you're going to have bad electrical connections we'll get that put in here and then the main shaft goes in there's bushing also known as a thin washer that goes on each end of it and now we got to deal with this gear remember it was loose on the shaft Here's the old pin and what had happened is at the intersection of the gear onto the shaft it had worn a little bit and given it a little bit wobble. Eighth inch pin, I bought an eighth inch spring pin and this is a solid pin but this is a hardened spring pin and, pin and that'll do just fine. The added bonus of spring pins is the spring action helps keep them tight. She's all seated in now I can just cut the end off here. There we go. Problem solved. <laughs> nice and tight. Here are the springs and weights all in. You may notice that there's two different springs in here and one's been replaced sometime or another. There used to be a whole slew of different springs that went in these depending on the total advance and the advanced curve for the particular tractor. That's been lost to history. When you find them online now, it's hard to tell what they're for and they're very expensive. And frankly, I don't know is there that that advance curve is all that important because the advance on this max is out relatively low in the RPM curve so it's at full advance most of the time you're running it. Then this guard plate goes on it helps keep everything from jumping out the weights in the cam. Then the breaker plate goes in that the points in the condenser are mounted to. Now we can put a whole bunch of new goodies in. <laughs> I get all my Distributor electrical parts at Napa, their Eklund brand I found is a lot higher quality than some of the kind of junk you get online. Before I set the points, I like to take a piece of 2000 grit sandpaper, very, very fine, fold it in half and pass it between the points contacts with the reason being sometimes in storage they get glazed and just pulling a piece of 2000 grit through them a couple times will take that glaze off. The question always comes up why do I run points in my tractors why don't I put electronic ignition in? I put electronic ignition in the MD because I wanted it to have the best chance of starting easily on gas on all my other tractors that came with points ignition, I still run points ignition in it. The reason is because I never have problems with it. Tractors start right up. They run fine. Very rarely have a set of points go bad. Worst thing I have to do is once in a while take the glaze off them if I haven't run the tractor in a long time. But I have absolutely no problems. And if I ever do have a problem, I can go right down to the parts store and get a new set of points. So that's why I do it that way. We'll just set the breaker gap. Put the 
points on the top of one of the lobes here, 20 thousandths. There we go. We got a nice snap on the points, just what you want to see. These points kits come with cam lobe grease. Put that on the point of the rubbing block here. And that's it. I made a new gasket for the cover plate here just in case any moisture or dirt gets in through and that'll help block it. And I'll wait to put the cap and rotor and such on this until after it's done painting. So we're all set to paint this. And I have everything else cleaned up and ready to paint. I wanted to finish the ignition and the fuel system, kind of button it all up before I move on. So we've got the manifold here and I'm gonna wind up painting this red just like they did at the factory. And then on the exhaust portions of the manifold, the paint will burn off. I've painted these black before with high heat paint and they just don't look right to me. It's just a personal preference thing. And the mushroom cap and parts of the air cleaner and there's the old coil. Here's the air cleaner, all ready to go. Not much, should be a quick paint job, so let's get started. Passage of time, it's been a couple days. Parts are all dry and ready to reinstall on the tractor. We'll just do this by side of the tractor. So this is the fuel side, carburetor and air cleaner. And the other side is the electrical side, distributor and plugs and wires. Now we gotta take the masking off first here. And we can put the intake and exhaust manifold gaskets on. and the manifold. And we got these big fat washers that go to hold to clamp both flanges together so the whole thing can expand and contract with heat without cracking. Snug them up and then go across and tighten them evenly so that the gasket seats. I'm going to tape the top of this closed so nothing accidentally falls into it. A little story, when I was a little kid, I used to play in my dad's shop while he was working on things. He was rebuilding an engine. I remember it was a V8 because of the way the manifold was shaped. And I was messing around and I dropped a welding rod down into the intake manifold. And for some reason he said to me, you haven't put anything in that engine, have you? He must have seen me. I said, no, no, no. And then... A little while later, I said, well, I lost something. He had to take it all apart, and fish the welding rod out, and put it back together. I felt really bad about that. Now we can put the carburetor on, and I'm going to put the hose on that <clears throat> attaches it to the air cleaner now, because it's kind of easy to push it on while it's still off the tractor. Also, before I put the carburetor on, I'm going to put the governor linkage onto it, because these are kind of a bear to reach from around back when it's on the tractor. Works the throttle butterfly, just like that. Then we can set the carburetor in place. There's the governor linkage going up front. The gasket goes in dry. Interestingly, when I cleaned this off, I thought they brazed just to fill the vacuum port here, but actually this whole side had cracked off the manifold and uh, they braced it back on. Brazing is kind of a lost art these days. I'm going to put the pin in up front that hooks in the governor linkage. I'll have to adjust this later on after I get it running, but for now, we'll just put her in here. Why that alternator is in my way? And here comes the air cleaner. i got to get this hose started on the side. There we go. And 
This air cleaner has slotted holes in it so it's adjustable forward and back so you can get it to line up with the hood. This other stuff, it's not adjustable, but we'll have to do some final adjustment when the hood goes on. <laughs> it's gonna be a while, but I'll have to remember you can move it around. Why is that one different? It's not supposed to be, these are supposed to match. That's gonna drive me nuts. And then the cup. I fill all the fluids when I'm done, ready to start the tractor, so she stays dry for now. And we gotta put the mushroom cap on. Now we have a complete fuel system, except for the gas tank, which will come much later. Then we can get started with the ignition side. This is the drive unit that drives the distributor, distributor mounts on here. This is the tang gear, whatever you want to call it, that mates with the engine. We're going to put a little bit of engine assembly lube on here for temporary lubrication. Slider in there. This drive unit goes right here on the ignition side of the engine and I pulled the shaft back out. One thing I like to do is these tangs are kind of a tight fit in the drive gear here, so I put that in first and then slide this over it. Just a little bit of farm all trivery, trivia. The older drives had a slotted hole in the bottom here so you could turn the whole thing back and forth to fine adjust the timing on the magneto. It's a weird thing, but they went away with that. So you can't turn this anymore, but they stuck with the clamp on the top and the remnants of the casting for being able to turn the magneto. It's kind of a halfway changed design. International did that a lot. Instead of completely redesigning things, they would often just tack on to old designs and improve them. Let's take out these old plugs. I left them in for repainting the block. Old plug. Now we gotta get the engine to number one piston top dead center. And remember the mark is on the flywheel under here. I gotta turn it. Well, you're hiding on me. There are lots of different ways you can do this. You can put a straw in here and watch it tilt down when it comes up. You can tell, but I don't know. I like the exactness of looking at the mark on the flywheel. Plus it gives me a little exercise. Where did you go? I can get my sit-ups in for the day this way. There's my mark on the plate behind the flywheel and my mark on the flywheel lined up. And looking in through the number one plug hole, I hope you can see that. There's the top of the piston right at the top of the stroke. And there are some notches on the crankshaft pulley you can see here, but there's no pointer. And that's the way it is with these tractors, but I can keep track of about where the notches are so I know when I'm about at top dead center. I can actually see the piston in there. So now we're gonna come back down about half a turn. Stick your finger in the hole and make sure you're on the compression stroke. This is how we find compression stroke. It's gotta be top dead center, number one compression stroke. Remember it's four stroke. Not yet, oh. There we go. Check the mark on the flywheel again. Do some more sit-ups. There we go. Now I'll take the distributor, take the cap off it. And with the cap on, that's the number one piston right there. That tower right there is number one. So we look underneath here and see where our rotor is. That's the firing contact on the rotor. Spin that around and get it lined up with number one. Cause we're at top dead center compression where the cylinder wants to fire. So we want the distributor to be in the firing position. Get it over here. And you can hear the point snap. Well, you can't hear it, but I can feel it. That little bump right there, right at the center of that. That's number one top dead center on the distributor. Carefully put that together without turning anything. Put some grease on this gear. It gets grease from the housing. But to get started, we're gonna grease the gear up real good. 
Then we'll slide that distributor right in, being as careful as we can that the gear doesn't turn when it meshes up. Put the clamps on. And of course we can fine tune the timing on this by rotating it back and forth after we get the engine running, which inevitably we'll have to do. Put the clamp for the coil on. It's easier to reach this far bolt without the coil in here. Get that one started. And then the coil slides in. Whoops, can't forget the ballast resistor. This is a 6 volt coil running off a 12 volt battery, so we need this. There we go. These are Autolite 3116 spark plugs gap to 25 thousandths. And a new set of plug wires, I always get the ones with the pre-made ends on them. I never have much luck making the ends as well, so it's nice they still make them for these old tractors. That's the coil wire. Plug number one. Firing order is 1342 going in a clockwise direction, so next plug is number three. And then plug number four, and finally plug number two, and the coil wire. When I put the hydraulic pump back on, which goes right here, and put the hydraulic lines on, I'm going to pull these back up, but I just wanted to get it all buttoned up because it gives me, you know, sense of closure. That's it for the fuel and ignition systems, at least on the engine. I think the next job is this thing. I've been putting it off. It may not look that complicated, but there's a lot about a million little pieces in here, springs and uh, friction discs and all kinds of things. And this is kind of wiring central. So I want to get this on so I can wire the tractor up. And it also, of course, holds the steering wheel. So I'm going to be taking this part and cleaning it up and then we can get to work on wiring and gauges and that sort of thing. I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll just keep marching along, you know, Takes me about a week to turn one of these around between cleaning up, assessing, getting parts, painting, putting back together. So please be patient and I'll see you next time.